What's up everybody, Ramey here, and today we're talking about our bumper plates versus iron plates. What should you get for your home gym? You can see I've got some Rogue Fleck plates here, I've got a 45, 25, and I've got some York uh, made in the USA milled iron plates um, from the 80s, these are 90s, these are a 45 pound and 25 pound York milled plate. Um, we're going to talk about when should you buy each one, what are the advantages and disadvantages of these things, um, and kind of my thoughts on them. All right, so first of all, let's start out with bumper plates, because these are kind of the thing that I feel like everyone who has a home gym kind of feels like, I should get bumper plates. That's kind of what I see, like, which bumper should I buy? And then what I ask them is, why are you getting, do you definitely need bumpers? Are they the right thing for you? Because they're not always the right thing. Um, so let's kind of start out with when do you need bumpers? So bumper plates are designed for when you're dropping weight. That's it, that's what they're designed for. When you are dropping weight. If I'm doing a deadlift and I drop, I want bumper plates. If I'm doing Olympic lifts and I drop, bumper plates. Why? Because bumper plates are coated in rubber. Look at this. Nice little bounce to them when they hit the ground. So they're gonna absorb the ground better, which is gonna do two things. It's going to, one, not destroy your floor as easily as iron plates would. Even if you've got a platform, you're still in your garage or basement, really. I, I like to be cautious. I use bumpers. Um, the other thing is they're definitely a lot more quiet because they're coated in rubber. So that's the main reason why someone uses bumper plates. Are you, ask yourself, are you dropping weight? Yes, then I definitely just, I need some kind of bumper plates. No? Well, now we have, so let's say you're not driving. Well, now you're, you know, you got a choice. So what do you want to get? Let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each now that we've kind of gotten into the why you actually need bumper plates. All right, so bumper plates, um, advantages of them besides being a little more quiet and besides being able to be dropped, um, have some other advantages. Another advantage is that since it's coated in rubber, you don't need to worry about it rusting like I do, especially for these older plates here, which I got to coat in oil every once in a while. Rubber is not going to rust. Um, however, what rubber does do is rubber fades and gets old. So I actually have had to clean these one time. So almost whether you're getting irons and you have to oil them or uh, bumper plates and you need to clean them with like tire cleaner or silicone because the color gets, I mean you don't have to, but the color gets real faded and they get really dirty and look kind of crummy. Um, so you do need to clean these, which I've now cleaned these one, I've actually only oiled these one time and I've only cleaned these one time. I've never actually cleaned my 45s, or my 25s here. All right, so besides that, that's kind of where the advantages of bumper plates end. Now, if we want to talk about like cool colors and stuff, you can buy iron plates and colors. Bumpers definitely come in more colors and they do kind of look nice. So that's a, an opinion thing. Um, but that's kind of it for the advantage of bumper plates. So then we get into this, um, the disadvantages of bumper plates and advantages of iron. So let's talk about irons and then we'll kind of start to talk about some of the disadvantages of bumpers and differences of iron. So iron plates, are standard run-of-the-mill irons. Um, one of the things you'll notice immediately about iron plates is that the 45s of bumpers and irons are pretty much identical. Obviously that varies by company and you need to measure it. Um, they can differ a little bit, but in general the 45s are the same diameter. Look at these two 25 pound plates here. Look at the difference in diameter of them. So the 25 pound irons versus the 25 pound bumpers are two different sizes. Now, why is that? Why would these be two different sizes? Because when you're dropping bumper plates, you want them all to have the same diameter so that the force is being applied evenly, not just on the 45 pound plates, which is why they're bigger. Now that bigness, while cool for deadlift and uh, Olympic lifts where you're dropping weight actually in practicality kind of stinks in the gym. Um, so when I'm walking around carrying iron plates, these are so much easier to carry because they're so much smaller. And the advantage of this smallness is great when I'm doing certain exercises like belt squat and I need to be able to go down further. I can load up 40, 25s on my belt squat. Um, on my reverse hyper, I don't, don't like using big any big plate bigger than this. So I can load my reverse hyper up with 25s or else it hits my shins when I use these bigger plates. 
Um, same thing with my uh, lat pull down, which is plate loaded. I put on 25s because of, I, I'm actually saving wall space by being able to load up 25s. So lots of big advantages for these smaller plates. Another big difference between uh, bumpers and iron plates is the thickness. So what you'll notice is the iron plates actually are, well, you can get very different kinds of thickness iron plates between deep dish and super thin. Um, but when you talk about like medium plates like this, look at how thick, look at the difference in thickness. So these, this 25 is actually about the exact same thickness as the, the 45. I'm not going to pick it up, but you can just see how large of a difference the diameter or the, the width of these are. It's almost double or more than double the size in thickness. So what does that mean? That means when I'm loading up the barbell, if I'm super strong, I can only load a few of these on the barbell, whereas I can load many more of the, the, the iron plates. So I'm able to load a lot more weight onto the bar with iron plates, which is a huge advantage for irons. The other thing, um, and I think this is often overlooked um, between these two, is that bumper plates really suck to carry. Carrying this 45 really stinks. It's not fun. It's really awkward to carry. I got to pick it up from the bottom. Hope it doesn't slip because it's rubber um, and it gets slippery like when I clean it and it's just awkward to carry. I can't like put my hand in here. Like there's nowhere to like hold onto. Like there's nothing to hold onto here. Versus my 45 pound barbell plate there's a nice ledge here for me to grip as I'm grabbing. It's also, it's, the, you know, the bumper's so thick that it's just awkward to hold. This is thin and I can grip and hold this like a handle. And there are iron plates like the six, Avanco six shooters and stuff that have the holes in them that make it even better to grip. So much, much, much easier to grip. All right, we get the cost. So cost is kind of interesting. Um, I don't find much of a difference in cost. Um, if you're buying good irons versus good bumpers, you're going to spend spending some money and it, it's going to be fairly even. If you're buying cheap irons versus cheap bumpers, you can find them each for a dollar a pound um, from cheap places. Now, one thing I will say um, when you are start talking about like cheap irons versus cheap bumpers, when you buy cheap irons, the biggest thing you have to worry about is um, the tolerance. Like, if it says 45 pounds, how close is it to really being 45 pounds? That's really what I have to worry about when I buy cheap irons. Um, because, you know, if I don't like the finish, I can paint them. If, like, I don't, I'm not too worried about it, like, breaking, because it's a solid piece of steel. Um, versus a cheap bumper plate, um, which I have seen shred shred down lines. I've seen them, the thin ones, the 10 pound, especially bend in half um, and basically just kind of fall apart. I've also seen like the rubber be like pretty uneven, like they, they're not like the same size and stuff like that, where that's not as much of a concern with iron plates. Um, you know, different size bumpers is a big concern, like on deadlift, if they're different sizes, that's problematic. Whereas like on bench press with my iron plates or squats, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, they can be different sizes. So that's kind of like when you start talking about like cost and what am I going to buy on the cheap end. If I'm buying cheap, I probably get the cheaper, cheap irons over cheap bumpers at the high end. Like get what, I mean, get whatever you want. I'm not saying what you should get. The, the cheap bump, I've seen, I know many people that have the cheap bumpers from Walmart and Amazon that are a dollar a pound and they're completely fine. So they're fine. I just, I just personally probably wouldn't go down that route. Um, all right. So I kind of talked about the advantages and disadvantages of each of these and what you should, what uh, my thoughts are on them. So let me kind of talk about like the overall, what, what I think people should be buying for their home gym, what I would do differently if I could go back and do it. Um, so if I could go back, I probably would not buy any bumpers at all. Um, I do not drop weights at all. I kind of bought them because they look cool. 
but they're kind of a big pain in the butt. The 45s are a big pain to move around. They're too thick. Um, they're too thick on the bar. I can't fit enough weight on certain exercises, um, which is a big pain. Uh, they're too thick and I just don't drop my weights at all. When I do deadlifts, I bring it down slow, and that's the close I get to dropping a barbell. So, I just don't drop weights. I just, I don't think the bumpers were worth it for me. They were also pretty costly. Um, I bought, you know, go check out Rogue Fleck plate prices. I actually got these with free ship, but still, they were expensive for what they were. Um, and I just, I don't think that bumpers were the right call for me, even though I bought them because they look cool. Now, iron plates, I 1000% should have went iron plates. I really like irons. Um, I can fit tons of these 45s on the bar. I can find these super cheap for a dollar a pound and I'm not worried if they're the cheap kind, they're still gonna work and they're gonna outlive me. So that's fine, like if irons rust, simply clean the rust off, repaint it, that kind of thing. Really simple to take care of. Um, I just should have bought iron plates to start out with. Now, the big question for you is what should you buy? Or, you know, the big first question, are you dropping? If you're dropping, get some kind of bumper plates. If you're not dropping, ask yourself, what do I think is cooler? What do I like? Do I like the colors versus irons? That kind of thing. Um, am I worried about like carrying these things around the gym because these bumpers are a huge, I can just tell you, they're a huge pain in the butt. You first get them, you're gonna say, oh, it's not bad, I can do that. But you know what, like three, four, five months in when you're carrying these things around after you're dead tired in the middle of a workout, you really wish you had something that was easy to carry around, especially when you're dragging like four or five of them around. It, it's a big pain and it sucks. Um, so kind of consider that when you're looking at bumpers versus iron plates, like what do you really need? Now, which type should you get? Because there's so many kinds of bumpers and so many kinds of irons. That's a different video. You gotta do some research. I'll do some more videos on that. Go search out what else is out there. I'm talking about in general, the iron versus bumper. Um, but that's the big thing. It's really, am I dropping versus not? Um, and then, you know, a little bit of maintenance, quiet, um, things like that can matter versus look and feel, what do you want to get? But, you know, your plates do kind of define your gym. It's what people see besides your rack and barbells. Like, what kind of plates do you have? So I've got the Rogue Fleck, which looks super cool. And I've got the old school York, made in the USA, milled plates, um, which also say something about me. So... Yeah, those are my choices. Those are my thoughts. I'd love to hear why you get rubber versus, you know, bumper versus iron plates. Those of you who are new to a home gym and thinking about what you should get, I'd love to hear like your rationalization about what you're deciding you actually need. All right, y'all. Later.